In today's episode of Soul Zero Two, we want to talk about the rhythm that everyone moves to in life. Everyone's tune is different, and unless we have an inner song, we can become lost on the journey. And welcome, this is Lou Perez, and this is the podcast that is putting the oxygen back into the Christian life one soul at a time. And today I want to talk to you about uh, the question, do you have a song that gets you through life? Do you have a song that gets you through life? Think about music, song, rhythm, beat, tone, uh, and, and, and just general percussion. Uh, it is believed that life has a rhythm, and I believe that life absolutely has a rhythm. And there are even scriptures that talk about it in Job, that, that, that the stars actually sing, that they, they utter a sound even though you can't hear it in space, and they say that because of the high frequency, that even bats can't hear it, but nevertheless, it's, it's being heard by God, and that's worship to Him. But uh, let me just say this today, that life has a rhythm to it. Life has a an unspoken, unheard pulse that we all move to, and the way that we move depends on that own unspoken song that we're singing in our hearts. And so I want to talk about that. I, mean, I think it's going to take three times together to share it because it was kind of long. So I, I, I chopped it up into three parts. But uh, have you ever noticed that most of the seasons in your life when, when uh, you're struggling, there's a song that you're singing? It could be the top 10 hits of a song or it could be an old classical piece. Or if you're like me, I love Richard Strauss when I'm in a complicated mood. Um, or when I'm really struggling, I just put on worship music and worship God. But, and maybe maybe somebody, you know, plays a love ballad or, 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 or something. But think about this for a second. As followers of Christ, or I'm talking to you Christians now. As followers of Christ, God has given you a song to move by. And it's the song of redemption. Which means that the whole lens of your life, the whole, the headphones of your life that you're listening to, are through the kingdom of God, his paradigm. Now in scripture, songs express praise, songs express thanksgiving, songs express joy and victory and love, but they also express sad sadness and in some cases mockery. Some songs were mockeries and they were used in the scriptures to teach and to warn people. Uh, some songs were, were used as, as object lessons of what not to do. And even in the new heavens and the new earth, uh, there will be a new song sung to God that was never sung before. And the scriptures abound with, with all kinds of uh, different songs that, that, uh, that we have uh, seen. Uh, one of the first ones we see in scripture is Moses, that after the Red Sea victory where the, where the sea uh, receded, uh, Moses sang a song. Right? His people sang a song of victory. Deborah sang a song after the victory over Israel's enemies. And Hannah, uh, the mother of Samuel, uh, she sang a song after God had opened her womb, the Bible says in 1 Samuel, and Samuel was born. David sang a song after God delivered him from being chased by a man who tormented him for many years, King Saul. And David sang a song of victory, even though he, he loved him dearly. Mary, the mother of Jesus, after a prophetic word given about the Messiah, uh, she sang a song. She sang a song of victory and of breakthrough. And then a man, uh, he was a prophet slash priest by the name of Zechariah. Uh, he sang a song after Jesus' circumcision, a prophetic song about salvation, how salvation was coming to the world and how he finally got to see it. Even the angels sing. They sang to welcome Messiah in Luke chapter 2 and 13. And a man named Simeon, another prophet, and uh, I think he was a priest also, but after he saw the promised Messiah, he said, I'm ready to die now. I have seen your salvation. And he sang a song. Now Job even speaks about creation singing songs. Job said, he said that the stars sing to each other like a chorus in a chorus. And I looked this up, and, there, and many studies have been done, but it is believed by, by physicists that that stars can actually generate sound even though we cannot hear them with our ears because the frequency is way too high and due to the vacuum of space 
But nevertheless, they make a sound. And guess who is hearing that? I believe God is, because all creation, the word says, worships God. So the whole universe resonates to the divine song of its creator. And so there's a song that is being sung. There's a, there's a theme that is being sung by creation to its God. And since we are free will beings as people, we have a song we can choose to move to or not. We can either choose to move to God's song or we can make our own tune, which, you know, how's that working out for you when you think about it? Uh, I've tried that when I was young by doing my own tune. I mean, metaphorically, I mean, spiritually, it doesn't work to create your own tune. You can't live without God. You can't live without your creator. But sometimes, uh, here's the point. Sometimes when in great trial, when in great tribulation, when when you feel like your life is barren, sometimes you have to learn how to make your own melody. And I have musicians in my family who are phenomenal, who are gifted and write music and record and, you know, building studios and all this stuff. And they would, they would agree with what I'm saying today, that we have to make our own sound. We have to make our own song. There's something about making your own song that confronts your condition. It confronts your situation. It confronts the, the problem or the challenge you're going through, especially when you do it through God's song. If I do my song, it's only going to last a day. If I do God's song, it'll last through eternity and it'll never fail. But here's my point. Uh, Paul the Apostle tells, tells us in Ephesians that we uh, should make a practice of making our own sound, creating our own sound, our own song in our hearts as part of our journey in Christ. That this should be our habit, that when things are out of whack and out of alignment and out of tune spiritually, we need to make a song. Ephesians 5.19 puts it this way, As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, sing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts. There's something about singing in your exile, singing in your pain, singing in your struggle that transports you, that transforms you out of that situation to the point where you begin, you begin moving by a divine tune, by God's tune that has never stopped since creation. In fact, if you ever saw the Chronicles of Narnia or read, or read the book, <clears throat> the creation scene, in one of the books, <clears throat> uh, I can't remember which one, but one of the series has the, the lion singing a song, and his song is filling the universe, and it's creating the world, and it's creating, it's making creatures and creation. It's beautiful. It's it's a wonderful way to illustrate the idea of song that that uh, that creation in that story was birthed out of a song, and there's a song that's that is happening, and Paul from prison had a chance to live, live out his own theology, his own admonition to us. When he was in prison uh, with, uh, with, with Silas, but he was also in, in other prison situations. But when he was in prison with Silas, at midnight, they started singing a song. They started praising God, singing to God. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's not gonna, it's gonna, it's not gonna help me if I start singing, you know, my favorite pop 10 song. It, it might help me emotionally. But if you really want to help spiritually, if you really want to get out of that doldrum, you need the power of God. And the power of God is the power of song. And so Paul from prison, from, from the very depths of prison, he said this. Now he's writing this from prison. He said, with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. And that's Colossians 3.16. And think about this. This man is in confinement. This man is is for lack of a better word, he's stuck in his song. He's, he's stuck in his situation. And he is just moving forward. He's moving forward by faith, trusting that God is going to do a mighty thing in his life. So I want you to think about it and frame it this way in your heart as an encouragement to you. And a question, what is your song? What song are you singing these days? Has it, been, has it been a song of depression? Has it been a song of doubt, self-doubt, a song of hopelessness, a song of no one cares, no one loves me, I'm all alone, I'm isolated? Well, I want to challenge you to sing God's song. And this has been made, made, made real to me more than ever that 
Yes, we can sing our own songs and, you know, I can sing my favorite Stevie Wonder song or my favorite, you know, whoever, whatever band I like. And that might help me to a point, but nobody can help me but the one who created me because he knows how I'm made. He knows how I'm wired. And when I come into resonance with his song, his, the song of the redeemed, everything changes for me. And there is hope for my life. So be encouraged today not to give up. Find God through your struggle and stick with him and, and sing his song and ask him, ask him to give you his song over the songs that are dark and hopeless in your life. Uh, I, I want to encourage you to uh, check us out on, on uh, soul02.com and there you'll find articles and blogs and we're now on YouTube so we have videos and we also have this in audio form always. And uh, please uh, click the subscribe button and like us because we're trying to build up that YouTube channel and just connect with us and share it with friends. And uh, until next time, I want to encourage you to continue to follow God and find him and find your song in Jesus' name.